Hey everybody, welcome to my Christmas vlog. I figured I'd put out a Christmas vlog. I have a few hours before the next Christmas party. It's uh, Christmas Day. See, I'm a dedicated YouTuber because I know a bunch of you guys out there are not into Christmas, so I figured I'd put out a quick vlog. So, in this vlog, I'm going to answer a question that was recently put to me. What do you think of this guy's YouTube walkthrough coding tutorials? Generally speaking, when it comes to walk through tutorials, I say those are the second thing that you should use to learn how to code. Number one, you got to learn what I call the core. Those are the foundational concepts and principles that are universal to all programming languages, all coding. Along with the core, you're also learning the syntax, the actual code that you're writing. But the more important thing is the core concepts, core techniques. It's funny, I was at a party yesterday, another Christmas party, and a friend of my father's was there, an older guy, retired, and he had done a lot of C++ programming and C programming in his uh, time as a developer. And this whole thing about programming came up and so on, and he was saying the same thing as I'm saying to you. Any experienced developer will tell you that, that the key to being a great developer, to be a pro-level developer, is having a solid foundation in the core concepts, the core techniques, because those translate across all languages, all libraries, and in the end, by learning the core first, you're going to supercharge the learning process. You're going to learn how to code much more quickly than you would any other way and much more thoroughly. One of the consistent things that I hear from people who uh, try to learn how to code with walkthrough tutorials on YouTube or paid is that they come away with a lot of gaps, a lot of holes in their knowledge, and they're not sure where to begin. It's only natural. Then they come and they do my, <laughs> they do my core training, all of a sudden everything is like super simple. And here's the irony. If you learn your core principles first, all of a sudden all those walkthrough tutorials become super easy. So instead of taking you 10 hours to do a walkthrough, it takes you only one hour. You get the idea. Think of it this way. If you wanted to learn how to play an instrument, let's say you wanted to learn to play guitar. Now, you can learn to play guitar, well, learn to play guitar by doing these uh, tutorials of how to play this song or how to play that song. And you just, they teach you how to play the chords and they say, do this chord, then that chord, then this chord. Now, the problem with learning how to play guitar by just learning how to play the songs is that you don't learn anything about music or very, 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 very little. You don't understand about the notes, about what's sharp and flat. You don't understand about blue scales versus jazz scales. You don't learn the scales. You don't learn about how to properly hold your pick, how to strum the strings, depending on the style of guitar that you're playing. You get the idea. If you learn the core and the foundation of music and playing guitar, all of a sudden you can learn every song like this. But if you learn just how to play the five, five songs, all you're going to come away with is the ability to play five songs. And you go, if you try to go play in a band and say, hey, I can play these five songs. Well, yeah, but can you play any of these other songs? And you're going to be going, no. Same thing with programming. Learn the core first. Once you've got your core foundation in there, then you can jump into projects. Now, the way I have set it up, I've been teaching since 2003. I've been a professional developer since the 90s. The way I set up my training is based on all my years of experience. I teach the core, and it's interactive, it's like almost having me sitting beside you, giving you hints, helping you along, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, and then once you got that down, then I provide a whole bunch of projects for you to choose from. Now, here's the thing. You've got a whole bunch of projects. Reality of the situation is you, you, you do, let's say, the PayPal shopping cart project, where you learn how to build a full-blown e-commerce site, but integrates with PayPal, processes credit cards and PayPal, and it does a calculation and taxes and all the shipping, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've done that one project, you're pretty much going to have all the skills that you need to do any other type of project. Now, again, you can't just go do the project first. You have to do your foundation training. Then you jump into the project. So I provide a bunch of projects for you to choose from, and you decide which way you want to go. Or you do my foundation training, then anything that you see on, the, on YouTube or any other site on the web any project-based walkthrough, then all of a sudden it becomes really, really easy. Again, instead of spending 10 hours, you do it in one hour. So the key component of a great coding course, which you should look for, is number one, core foundational training. Number two, some real-world projects, real-world projects. That's a problem with a lot of things I see on 
the web too, they'll teach how to create a shooter game in Python. It's almost a waste of time because you know what? Nobody creates shooter games with Python. Python is using AI, ML, machine learning. Python is using web app creation. Python is using server automation. Python is using data scientists and processing data. Nobody makes a game with Python. So why would you teach somebody? I guess you could argue it's kind of fun you make a game with Python, but you made a game, but you don't have anything real there. So you should be teaching real stuff. So in my interactive web developer course, guess what people do with web development coding? They build e-commerce systems that integrate with PayPal, right? That's why I teach that. I don't teach how to create a shooter in JavaScript. Why? Because nobody uses JavaScript to create shooters. Well, you know, I guess it's fine if you have time to wait. You can do that. But I figure you don't have time to waste. You know, this channel is not just about coding. It's about being an entrepreneur. It's about getting out there and making money with the code, whether it's a job, whether it's an entrepreneurial thing, uh, whether a freelancer thing. So I always try to bring in the realism into what I teach. So by the way, the third part about any good coding course is the career aspects of it and the specializations. So first one is, first level of a good coding course is core training. Second level is the, uh, some projects. Third level should be uh, career, the career aspects. So you understand what the career paths are for a particular language or a particular type of programming that you're doing, and then the specialization. So for instance, in my Python course, I teach you the three career paths, which is of course, job, getting a job, becoming a freelancer, or building your own Python programs that you sell into the marketplace. I talk about the different paths, how, how to get there with each one, the pros and cons, et cetera, et cetera. And then you got the specializations within Python because it's broad based. You got several specializations. You got data sciences. You got AI and ML. You got uh, web app development, etc. In the web stack, there's different specializations within the web stack. You can be a full stack developer. You could be a front end developer. You could be a WordPress professional. Again, pros and cons to each. Different personality types. Different opportunities to each. I teach this. This is the difference between a real course that teaches you real world job ready, money making skills versus walkthrough tutorials or piecemeal things that's going to waste your time. You have to think about that. Finally, a good teacher should bring two things to the course, two fundamental things. Number one, the course should be easy. My job is to simplify this stuff. Number two, I have to choose the good things, the important things in each of the technologies or the languages that you need. So if you think about it, any of the programming languages out there, even the coding languages like CSS, HTML, any of these languages, they're huge, especially like programming languages like Python, Java, PHP, uh, C Sharp, et cetera, whatever, pick a language. They're big, they do a lot. The thing is, you're not gonna use 90% of the language 90% of the time. Most of the time, you're using a small subset of the language that you use day to day. So me as a teacher, my job, besides simplifying, is to pick out the key aspects of the languages and present those to you to create that solid foundation so you can launch your career, regardless of the career path that you want to take, right? I'm able to judge what is important in JavaScript, in PHP, in Python, because of my two decades experience as a professional developer. I know what concepts are important, what basic techniques are important, and I provide that for you, so you have that foundation. Unfortunately, you got a lot of courses out there put out by academics. Uh, a lot of them don't know how to teach, sorry. And a lot of them, I can tell, but they've never been in the real world and actually written real code in a production environment. So they teach a lot of unnecessary things. So for example, if you're a developer, you don't need to learn 10 different ways to uh, to iterate through uh, collections. You know, well, it's not 10, depending on the language. You get the idea. You just need to know the important things. And then once you have those foundational concepts, once they're locked up in your head, you understand them. Then if you need to learn something else, you learn them on a need to nerd basis. That's what I always tell people. Learn on a need to nerd basis. Because in the final point, 
you see so many frameworks out there and you see languages come in and out of favor. I remember, uh, you know, whatever, X, X number of years ago, I don't know what it is, seven, eight years ago, Action Script was huge. Action, oh yeah, Action Script. Now there's, Action Script is zero, dead, over. So if you thought of yourself as only an Action Script developer, you're like, ah. But on the other hand, you learn to be an advanced developer and you thought of yourself as a developer. Action Script is one of the tools in the toolbox, just like any of the other languages that are out there, whether it be Action Script, JS, Java, Python, whatever. They're just tools in the toolbox. And when I migrated, when I finally made the leap from being an intermediate level developer to advanced developer, is when I realized that. I said, I just, just write whatever language that is best for the job. So when I would walk into a job as a freelancer, I would sit down with the client, evaluate what their needs were, and depending on the technical needs and the business needs, and I'll describe that in another video, I chose a particular language or a particular framework that they needed. And in fact, on several occasions, I would choose a language or a framework I had never worked with before. But because I had a solid foundation, the core concepts and principles, it was easy for me to jump into a new language. It's easy for me to jump into a new framework. All right, that's it. I got to get ready to go. Got another Christmas party to go to. And uh, this one's with friends, so it should be a lot more fun than the Christmas party with my family. Just joking, the family is great. All right, ciao.